Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Mike Sanford, and we're going to cover View Clip today. And uh, before we get started, I thought I'd just give a fun slide about some of the things I did during COVID this summer. So, it gave us something to do a lot, a lot of uh, biking and hiking and kayaking. And, uh, and you could probably tell from the pictures that our six year old got the free ride on most of that because he just got to sit, sit in his seat and pretend he was pedaling and pretend he was pedaling. But uh, anyway, I've been, uh, so I'm at Domatic and I've been there for almost five years now and probably about three on CET. So, which is not quite caught up to my 20 years or roughly of C Sharp or Visual Studio. Um, and then that ancient picture on the lower right there is the first, uh, computing device I ever programmed on, which was a Timex Sinclair 1000. So you would actually press a key and it would put the whole word on the screen for you, like print or go to. Um, pretty pretty crude, but, uh, but it was pretty fun. It's a good way to get started. Um, alrighty. Um, so the title, I'll have to apologize for that. Lied a little bit, we're not covering subsystems. Um, that is a cool Dometic thing um, that um, some other members of our team implemented. I was gonna have someone else presented that when we were planning to do the live conference, not the virtual one. So, um, so but what that is, if you want a quick overview, it's kind of cool. It's basically a bunch of snappers put together in a favorite that's pre-configured with a bunch of properties. Um, and some special rules. So you can't change everything on them, um, but it cuts down on uh, configurations so that you spend a lot, lot less time setting it up. So then that those guys just get a special animation to drag them onto the screen. Um, but neat concept anyway. Um, anyway, so we're gonna just cover view clip today and go through the code and some demos for that. And uh, I got a couple links at the end for more info. Um, okay, so basically view clip is replacing view ports, which I'm hoping or assuming everybody knows that by now, um, since they would have automatically been replaced for you um, when that change happened, um, unless you're brand new to CET, in which case you don't know what a view port is. Um, then there's some terminology here. Um, if you've ever heard of X clip versus you, View clip. Basically, view clip is what the user would know it as, or the marketing term that they came up with, I guess. Um, X clip is what you'll see in the code, though. So if you're looking through the code, you're going to be searching for X clip, not view clip. Um, there is some of the migration stuff, but again, since most of you would have gone through that already if you needed to, um, I'm not going to cover migration. Um, but if you look in the webinar that Anton did earlier this year. He does cover that, um, basically where you can automatically migrate to load up some companions as a replacement or use a copy. Um, uh, I forget the exact name, copy feature or copy setting, I think it is, um, to help you with that migration. So, um, but you can look at that webinar if you want to learn more about that. Um, there's a link at the end of the, at the slide deck for that. Um, but basically why did this whole view clip thing come about? And it was to get rid of, one of the reasons was to get rid of the old GDI engine, which was quite slow. Um, so view clip is now using the red graphics engine, which is quite fast. Um, and I'll, I'll refer back to Anton's webinar again. If you go look at that, he's got a cool little demo that shows the two engines running side by side, showing how much quicker the, the new engine is. Um, and, and there's also some benefits that they've added to make this thing user friendly and some cool new options for it, like different shapes, um, circles and custom and things like that. Um, um, and, uh, and as well for the developer, these, um, are basically developed in a modular way to make it pretty easy to code. Um, in fact, once we get to the code, you'll see it's 
it's quite simple to develop these things. Uh, okay, let's do a quick screen demo of this. Um, so if we go into our paper space, and you can see here where we're going to pick our animation for the view clip. And we're going to place, so this is our, what we're calling our wormhole here. It's our view into our model space. And then the box that I'm placing here is my source snapper. So we're going to, just like view, viewports were, view clip is the same thing. And again, I think everybody should know this already. Um, so now it's here on our paper. And then the companions that we're going to talk about today are these guys down here below the, um, below the view clip. Um, so back to the slides. Um, so the source snapper is the one you saw when we were in, when we were looking at the model space view, selecting what, um, what we wanted to include. And then the wormhole snapper is the, what we're viewing on the view clip side of that. Oops. Let me get back to that slide, sorry about that. Okay, so the companion snapper, um, I just mentioned that is these guys down in here, that's what we're going to, um, that's what we're going to develop in order to make a change to our view clip so that you can add things in or make modify what the user is seeing for those papers. Um, they have a few um, required fields that you're going to want to look at. Um, there's a key, which is basically a lookup that the, the XClip engine uses. Um, so give it a unique name so that it can distinguish between your different view clips that you have. Um, and then you have a label that you need to provide, and that's used for the quick properties, essentially. Um, and, you know, obviously, use RS entries for the, for the label and whatnot. Um, so optionally, you can also provide a tool box image there. Um, so let's, if you don't, um, it's fine because there's a default one that will show up for you. Um, but if you want to provide a, a nice looking one, you can do that. Um, so then there's a couple methods on there for connect and disconnect to handle um, initialization or cleanup that you want to do when you're connecting the companion. Um, let me show you what that is real quick. Um, so if you pick one of these companions, like the black and white one, and you get your little animation here, once you hover over it, you can see that I'm selecting that guy. So I just connected. And you can see everything went black and white. And then if you want to disconnect, there's more than one way to do that. But um, there's a, you can hit the red X down here. To, to, and then the disconnect event fires. Um, just real quick though, since we're talking about it, there's a remove all feature down here as well, which is pretty cool. There we go. Um, then let's show my slides again here. All right, so then you got your, it is a snapper though, so you do get your typical, um, snapper things, property change, prop, quick props, and build 2D to make the changes that you need to. Um, and then I have a demo for this one. So let's look at that code. Um, so here's our, um, something I made called annotation sample companion snapper. And it will basically add an um, an annotation to your view clip. Um, so here's my key and label that we mentioned. Um, 
couple of properties for the quick properties. Um, we can skip by the quick property stuff. Build 2D method. So you, in here, we can get a hold of our wormhole snapper. And then from there, um, we can modify graphics for that. And then on this case, I just basically created a um, text box to show up on the wormhole. Um, here's the toolbox image for that companion. Um, and then, oh, I skipped over it on the slide, but it's very important you include this register X clip call because um, that's how you get it to show up on your um, toolbar. Um, last couple of methods down there are just enums for the um, quick properties. So let's see what that looks like. Um, I'm gonna switch to a different drawing. Actually, this one will be fine. Um, so the graphic I included was this little A down here for this. And if we apply this guy, it adds a little text box down there. CET experience is showing up. Um, so one cool thing about these guys is the quick properties that I put on that snapper. Um, they don't get cluttered up here with the view clips quick properties. They get put in their own area. So you go to configure here and choose which companion um, you want to change the properties for. So the annotation companion is the one I'm working on. And I made a few different options here. So you could have a you could have a preliminary drawing in orange, I guess, or you could do confidential in red, or the fun is the CET one I want. So just a simple way to add a little note on top of your view clip. Um, one of the built-in ones is very similar to this, and it's basically we'll get the scaling to show up on the on the view clip. Um, what else? Okay. I think we can, if, I've got another demo and a couple other classes to go through, but I don't know if anyone's got any questions so far. We could take a quick pause if. Not seen any so far. Okay. Um, yeah, again, this stuff is, basically dirt simple, but you just got to see it once and then you're like, oh, this is easy. I know how to do a snapper already, so I can easily do a build 2D and some quick props and you've easily modified your wormhole. Um, so again, this type of um, wormhole companion snapper, we're really just editing the graph right here. Um, if you want to get into editing your snappers, then there's another class for doing that. Um, so let's take a quick look at that. Um, here we go. So the these are basically um, content editors you could consider it, which is so that you can edit your snappers graphs instead of the wormholes graphs. Um, so the class is the xclip wormhole editor 2D companion snapper. That is quite a long name. Um, I think I put that on there, right? Yeah. Um, anyway, again, it's for modifying the content of your snappers. Um, there is one additional method that you're going to want to add in here, which is for creating your editor. Um, and your editor is where you actually do the work of modifying the graphs. Um, and you could actually do something we did in Domatic. You could actually have one of these. Um, companion snappers, but then provide a whole bunch of different editors for different types of um, for different types of editing. So maybe one applies to one type of um, filter, and one applies to a different type of filtering. So depending on what you're trying to change or whatever. Um, so the content editor is got an accept method on it. Um, for, for um, selecting your snappers. Um, and one note to make about performance on view 
clip is that you basically get a copy of the graphs in the view clip. So if you accept a million things, you're going to have a lot of extra graphs and memory used up. So you have to be careful with that. And, um, and another note goes for DWG snappers. So if you're doing a bunch of AutoCAD blocks, you'll want to be careful with that as well. Um, Um, these guys also have a begin and end that you can use for initialization and cleanup. Um, and then the actual method for editing the graphs is called edit. Um, and that parameter on that has an environment which has access to the um, source snapper and the graph. Um, so let's look at that code a minute. Switch classes here. So first the companion um, here is that create editor method. And it basically just returns the editor that I made for the demo here. Um, the other methods, the key and label are all the same. If you need to, you can do a local bound um, again, that's a snapper. Um, the connected, disconnected, which I'm not using, but I threw them in here just so you'd see it. Um, and then the registration at the bottom. So there's really not much in this class at all because the, um, at the content editor actually has the work for modifying the graphs. Um, Did I go to the wrong class? Sorry about that. I need to go to this one. Here we go. So, um, so we've got our accept and our begin and end methods in here. I'm just returning true because I want to modify everything in this case. Um, and then, yeah, you can ignore the ugly edit code I wrote. Basically, I destroyed everything in the graph. Um, you'll see why in a minute. Um, let's go look at it in CET, and I'm gonna. I made a special drawing for this one. So this is my crazy-looking office that probably nobody would want to work in, uh, and all these silly lamps are in the way, all over the place. Um, this is using the FICA extension, by the way. Um, so I threw um, two of these view clips on here. I'm going to apply my companion. Um, I didn't put any quick properties on that one, but you'll see the name of my companion is Hide Lamps. So. <laughs> I want to give this, uh, I want to print out this paper to uh, someone to review it, but they don't really care about my lamps. So we're just going to see the desks and other things in there. So anyway, just funny demo, but it shows that you can make changes to your graphs inside these guys. Um, and then I will slap on my other one too to, and call it preliminary because it's so you can see I got three of these configurations now with different quick properties. Um, there you go, preliminary, because that's a pretty ugly looking office. So anyway, let's um, switch back to the PowerPoint. And that was about all I had for that. Um, my email's up there if anything comes up for questions on that or whatever in the future, you can send me an email. Otherwise, here's a link, which I know you can't click on, but to Anton's video, but if you go on YouTube or the CET webpage, it's pretty easy to search for that. And it's a pretty good demo, um, covering a few more things that I did not cover here. So, and I am all set here, I think. So any questions? 
I'll give uh, everyone a sec to ask, but I know I had one, so I'll go ahead and ask. Is there any way to control, so like you can be destructive with your companions, right? You can actually remove graphs. Um, considering that you might have multiple companions trying to do that, is there any way to control like the order that this that these companions get applied in? That's a good question. Um, I don't know the answer to that. And um, I was actually thinking about that myself this week, but I did not try anything with it. I have a feeling. Um, so Come on, what's the chairman? <laughs> Hello. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And if you, if you if one deletes the graph, it it disappears. That's how it works. Okay. It's gone. So, so, but if two people like, what if one companion changes the color to one thing and a different companion changes the color to another? Yeah, that's an order thing, and I don't think we have. It's it's what order you place those companions on, as a okay. user. Um, the other thing I noticed while I was working with this was the accept method doesn't seem to fire. No, so it doesn't. If, it is, okay. it's, it, that is somehow broken. It doesn't fire. Okay. So it's just a bug, but it'll probably come back. Is that the deal? I don't know. Uh, that we need to ask. Uh, I, I noticed okay. that too. It's not in use anymore. I don't know okay. if it's just something that they removed by intention, but kept the interface because we don't like interface changes during, okay. uh, release okay. cycles or if so, it's something that they just missed in uh, in some of part of the implementation okay so where's that, that doesn't that? where's that method is that on the companion uh, yes on the okay i will put in a ticket with dev support and see what they sorry have to uh, say. sorry the the content editor sorry. content editor yes. oh, okay yeah so which could be bad because um yeah, we it's want not... to be able. We want to be able to limit it to this. To this, uh, so you don't have to ask the con for every content editor for every snapper. It's useless, so, right? Because it goes right. down into each graph. So, so if yep, and then also you get a copy of all those graphs because of that, and you're going to mm -hmm. use a lot more memory. Um, yep. And in I didn't show it in the demo, but basically I had to hard code that. I only wanted to destroy the lamps inside of the edit method, because the filter wasn't working. Yeah. So. Because otherwise it would be nice to us too. Yeah. But it was fun. Um, I didn't show any domestic examples because I wanted to write my own and learn how to do it. So. Yep. Yeah, but what is cool there, you can set fill color and those type of things, right? So you can actually look at things like uh, the tags or whatever. I mean, we do have a tags companion, so you don't need to do it for that reason. But there might be interests of uh, doing things like setting different types of colors based on their on uh, like uh, equipment status and th uh, status of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, if they are uh, existing or new and things like that nature, change uh, line styles for those type of things. Uh, that might be interesting. So for few, having like uh, the future flag, making it the dashed lines, for example, those those type of things you can do with these type of companions. Manipulate okay. the graphics in any shape okay. or form you want. Or change the colors or the line types yep. or mm -hmm. whatever. Yep. Well, that's what the black and white one does essentially. Is. Yep. Okay. We did have one question come in. Can I update changes such as Xclips property by loaded I think it's loaded one or update and any property during init. I mean, you um, can, you, you, if you create, write your own, it's good. You're going to get the loaded one and so on, just like any other snapper. The companion is just a snapper. So you can do anything you can do in a normal snapper there. Sorry, Michael, your presentation. Nope. I should shut up. Yeah, well, you're good. You're good. <laughs> I can fix that. It was the. <laughs> Gave the same answer, so we're good. Um, I guess um, just for the sake of keeping the conversation going, an opinion, what about using companions as a way to insert like automatic dimensions maybe? Does that make sense? Or is that better by just inserting the normal dimensions? It's interesting. You could, I know one thing you could do too is make a companion and make it a template so that you can just pick a template and apply it to things so so if uh, one of your companions did dimensioning maybe yeah, I, don't know I, if I'd, I don't know if i'd go that route but maybe it's an interesting idea but you have to be able to be, look at the graph itself and know how to dimension it no. right you have you have the snapper but you have the graph but you need to know which of the graphs in the snapper you're 
looking at to be able to auto dimension it and then you could possibly add in those that extra graph for the dimension uh, totally possible hmm. haven't thought about that but that's that's a good idea that's that's an idea i wouldn't yeah okay um looks like i have another question from rolf here go rolf should be able to talk now yeah, uh, I was just thinking this about auto dimensioning. I mean, you do have the snapper, right? So you yep. can yes. probably ask the snapper for the auto dimensions. Yeah, but you also have to remember you're get for editing, you're getting every graph inside that snapper. And you don't want to add in a new graph for every graph. So adding in the same dimension 200 times because you had 200 graphs on your snapper. True. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that because that gets called every. For, for do you get it for every sub subgraph, every instance of the graph? You get every graph, every little freaking graph you get there. So it's very easy to make mistakes in there to make it very slow. So you have to you be could, careful. Potentially, you could do that in the, one of the init methods. Yep, there is a there, there is a bunch of things one can do in there. If you look at the, can you all, maybe you can show the interface on the content editor uh, base class. Uh, content editor. Yep. Oh, they don't get more. It's, yeah, just. Yeah, so there, there, there is only a limitation is, uh, I mean, what uh, speed and um, imagination of what these can be used for. Uh, okay. Are there any other questions? Okay. Um, well, um, I think what we'll do is we'll hang out for a couple of minutes just in case anyone, if anyone thinks they have any questions they'd like to ask or something they'd like to see. But otherwise, uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone who, uh, who came to this one. I, uh, we both appreciate your attention. Um, yeah, we really hope you enjoy the rest of the experience. We'll see you around. Thank you. Thank you, Paul.